Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Right, Mick, what are we doing today? Well, we're doing a challenge, which is why we've got no guitars and why there was no music at the top of the video. This is the Affordable Rig Challenge. Dan versus Mick on a budget. We get so many requests from you guys and girls and guys and girls and other asking us uh, to please have more budget gear. I've taken this to the <laughs> extreme. Okay, so I think... I'm a pretty heavy painkillers right now. I'm just going to put that at the front of this. Dan has had some surgery on his knee. He's uh, he's recuperating. But feeling good. <laughs> but feeling good because he's on heavy painkillers, caffeine and... Uh, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Nice. Right. Um, so it's the affordable rig challenge, and I think it's going to throw up a lot of interesting debate. Yeah. Not least in the comments, and we can't wait to read your comments. So here are the rules, Daniel. Okay. You must assemble. God, my blooming eyes. But you look. You glasses work for you. They look good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've got some new ones that have been at the opticians for about three weeks. But you haven't picked them up. Yet. I haven't had a chance okay. to pick them up. Um, the rules are, you must assemble a rig comprising of one guitar, one amp, and three pedals. Right. Some kind of pedal board, power supply, and cables. Mm -hmm. The rig needs to be as affordable as possible. <laughs> Sorry. While being able to gig, mic'd up if necessary. Yeah, okay. So affordability is our, is our key here. It also needs to sound good and help you play well. Points will be awarded for low cost and value for money, which may not necessarily be the same thing. Okay, interesting. For versatility in tone, creativity and originality. All right. The winner shall be they who hits the magic compromise of cost and tone as judged by Fraser and Simon. Okay, but if it's a split decision? Uh, yeah, that's actually having two judges is never good, is it? No. No, okay. Um, I get the casting vote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Then we'll have to send them back to reconvene. Okay. Um, right. Uh, guitars first? Guitars first. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Should we do it together? Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> nice! Wow. We got there. Okay, I have it's a Squire Telly. Affinity series? Um no idea. What does it say? Does affinity. It say affinity on the end? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the cheapest Scott Squire Telly. The absolute cheapest. £179 brand new. And uh I think there are ones that are cheaper than that. Wasn't the Danish Peak one 139? Was it? Anyway, yeah, okay, so Squire Telly, Affinity Telly. And that's cool. And it's it's a telly. Can I have a ish? Not bad. Not bad. How many pieces? Seventeen. Four. Um, yeah, four pieces. You know nice what I do like about that? The neck feels really nice. Yeah, yeah. Killer. Now I bought this for my daughter, right? Yeah. And she loves it. It's it's really easy to play, um, and it's it sounds telly-ish. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, that looks so cool. Epiphone Senior. I'll explain this in the little vlog bit that we'll cut in at some point, but a quick synopsis is I decided that for me to buy a strat shaped object would be uh, not the right thing because okay. I'd never play it, so right. it'd be a waste of money. Now, you haven't wasted any money there because that's your daughter's guitar. It is. So it's being used yep. in a great musical yep. context. Absolutely. So it's not money that's thrown away. Um, or I would have to give it to somebody, you know, there's, <laughs> I have many strats you have. that I love. So it would be pointless to try and do that on a budget. Mm -hmm. What I thought I would do instead was get a guitar that we don't have. Are you going to bling? Between us. Also, I think with a cheap guitar or cheaper guitar, cost effective mass produced guitar, mm -hmm. if the thing itself has some acoustic resonance, that can help mitigate some of the other decisions. You being all clever again. Made. It's, yeah, but then the other thing it is fully hollow. It's a casino, right? Yeah, so that's, is that's it going to howl when, when when we get it going? So there's no there's no uh, 
block. It's in fully these, hollow, right? fully hollow, and it's a really pleasing thing. Um, run VT. Right, Saturday afternoon, about half past four. I've just won, bought a guitar on eBay, and I've decided I'm going to go and pick it up tonight because it's about a two hour drive there and back. And I'm excited about my new guitar. So, a nice guy called Matt has sold it to me. Hopefully, everything will be okay. Let's go. Okay, let's pretend for the sake of continuity that I've just got back from London. And I bought, for £270, blind on eBay, Epiphone Casino. One guitar that we don't have is a casino style guitar. So the difference between a casino and a 335 for anyone who doesn't know is uh, the casino is completely hollow. It uses P90 pickups instead of um, humbuckers. So there are fewer available frets. In addition to the fact that they feed back beautifully when you plug them in, it's also got a good acoustic character to it, so you can just play at home on the sofa without having to have it plugged in. It's a really satisfying guitar just to sit around and play. So I think this is a guitar that Dan and I can upgrade over time. I could tell by the photo, I could tell by the way he'd worded the ad, that he was a genuine seller. Um, I would want to check on a Gibson style guitar like this that it didn't have a neck break. It's really common for them to fall off stands, fall over in people's houses. And what happens is you get a big break here. It's got quite a lot of relief in the neck, a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm gonna adjust the truss rod when I put some new strings on. Oh look, Mick Signature, that pedal show, Kurt Mangan strings, which you can buy from them, that pedal show store, don't you know? 10.5 to 50, I'm not gonna put those on. I'm going to put the Dan Signature set on, which is 11 to 52. Um, I prefer slightly more tension on a Gibson scale length. I like those on Strats, I like these on Gibsons. So yeah, Epiphone Casino. Don't know what year it is, pretty sure it was made in China. Yeah, happy days. A great platform for upgrades down the line. Well, well, well. Okay, so a few minutes later, um, I have put the bridge down a bit. I have checked the intonation. I mean, it still, it still needs like a proper setup, I would say. I think these nut slots definitely need some attention um, and it would benefit from another kind of half an hour or an hour breathing on it. But do you know what? For 10 minutes work, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so uh, in a fit of eBay trigger happiness, I also bought something else, which I've got to drive into Bath to pick up now. Hmm. Righto. Genuinely, I've just returned from Bath. Um, it is now quarter past 10 p.m. I can't remember what time it was I left. I've uh, met a very nice guy called David, and he sells loads of stuff, and he just happened to be in Bath, and he just happened to have... Da, da, da. I was looking for a modulation pedal that wasn't digital. It did a few things that I think would sound pretty decent. 24 volts center positive, which is all the things you don't want in a power, in a power supply. It's not very many power supplies can do that. So that's gonna cost me dearly. I thought I was being smart by paying 90 pounds for a really nice analog uh, modulation device that's always gonna be worth 90 quid for as long as I'm or it are alive. Um, so there's no money lost there but the power supply is going to bump up the cost. So let's let's see if it works, I guess. Um, dear Daniel does something called the Electro Man, which is a 9 to 24 volt center positive. If I catch fire, this will be hilarious. Red light, that's got to be a good sign. <laughs> this will also be the very first time I've plugged the casino in as well, so it's a whole kettle of potential problems. Half bad. Noisy as anything. <laughs> I might have made a mistake. Okay, we'll see how it goes on the board. Right, other pedals. I'm really stuck. So uh, give me a minute and I'll be back.
After something of a nightmare, I've chosen a fuzz pedal, the Fox Gear Manic. Appropriately enough, I found it for £67. Uh, or at least that's what the Google Shopping result returned it as. For the overdrive, I just need a good all-round overdrive and... Oh God, off you go. Um, I really, really didn't want to do this. I really, really didn't want to turn to generic, any name, Chinese mass-produced landfill pedals. I really, really didn't want to do it. But I've got to keep the budget down and I, they sell trillions of them. Just goes against most of the things that I hold dear in life. <laughs> Kaffir Lime it is. There are the pedals decided then. Kaffir Lime Overdrive by Tone City. Manic Fuzz by Fox Gear. Electro Harmonics Worm, secondhand, noisy as hell, but at least it's analog or something. The amp's got delay and reverb in it, so I think I can figure out how that works. Right, I got out of here. Oh, good morning, by the way. I got out of here at about 11 p.m. last night. It's now 7.30 a.m. I was hoping to get here a little bit earlier because I've got it all to do. A couple of years back, Dan and I did a pedal board challenge and we made our own little pedal boards. And it's just some bits of wood from um, like yeah, any old DIY retailer. I think this was home base. Just pieces of wood. Um, as you can see, three kind of rail sections pieces of uh, softwood there, glued and screwed. Actually, I don't even think it's glued. It's probably just screwed together. And that's pretty sturdy, cheap board, you know, inexpensive pedal board. I am unfortunately bound to using Dan's power supply, which is good in one, <laughs> uh, the Gigri power supply, which is great in one respect because it's a fantastic power supply. Not so good because it's expensive, but because I chose this dumb eBay purchase, I got to get 24 volt center positive to it somehow and it didn't come with its own adapter. So I've shot myself in the foot there. 25 to eight, uh, hopefully I'll have that done soon. The whole pedal board total, including the power supply, is about bringing in a grand total, including some patch cables of... Very modest, don't you think? Interesting, huh? How did you uh, get yours done? Uh, run VT. Liv, look over there, it's Taylor Swift. What? Yoink. Very humorous. So there we go, look. That's great. It's a bit out of tune, but anyway. Yeah, but that's really cool. So there it we go. It looks fantastic. And what I hope for this is, um, I've explained it in the vlog, but what I hope, I'll tell you now, what mm -hmm. I hope is that um, if we feel these need replacing, we can put some different pickups on mm. it, change out some stuff, mod it up, and just see how cool this guitar would be. Um, you know, over time, I think it's a guitar that we'll use. And how much is that? How much do you think it was used on eBay? Ah, uh, man. 250 quid. 270. Ah, oh, okay. Yep. So not the very most cheapest thing you could ever get. Right. But, hey, not bad. That's really, it looks fantastic. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. Right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to temper that. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. How fantastic does it look now? Yeah. Okay. Well said. Yeah. No disrespect. But the other thing I um, was was posturing on, the other thing I was posturing on in the in the vlog was that I might actually take that off, because you know who famously stripped his Epiphone Casino and made it natural? Oh, don't like them. Here we go. Oh, cool. So I might do a John. Right. His was sunburst before. Okay. So uh, then it does. Amp. <laughs> okay. Right. 
We shouldn't laugh because people actually buy this stuff. Look, in the true spirit of this challenge, I went full Amazon Prime. Yeah. Right? I thought, what is... There, there are actually cheaper amps than this, right? This is the cheapest 20 watt amp yeah. that you can buy, right? I think it's 31 pounds, right? There is something wrong with the world when you can buy a piece of electronic equipment for 31 pounds, ship it halfway across the world and everyone makes money on it. Dude, I've had a look in the back. They're making money on this, Yeah. right? Um, yeah, so I thought, okay, it's gonna be 20 watts. Okay. So there's a bit of power there. Now I've, we'll have a, we can have a listen to it like this. It's, it's, it's not good. So I do have, I, uh, there's a, there's another, there's a contingency in place for that. Right. Right. But for the amplifier. Just off screen here. I think I know what it is, but <laughs> you can see that later. But the amp, the brand is called Rock Jam. Yeah. The, the brand sticker fell off. <laughs> <laughs> the amplifier has been placed back in around the pro approximate area. So that's the amplifier I bought, 20 watts. Yeah, made in hurry. Made in hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Um I've I've played it much safer. You certainly have. I've gone for the best selling amp in the in Europe, so I'm told. Um which is the Boss Katana. This is a not the late very a new one came out a couple of weeks ago. It's not that one, it's the hundred watt one which I think was 299 quid okay. when it was new. So that's, you know, 10 times the price yep. of your amp. Yes. I wonder if it's got 10 times the sound. I'm pretty sure it will. And I've chosen this deliberately because so many people have them and yeah. love them. Um, and I figure, I hope, it's going to be usable. Yeah. Everyone says it is, so I'm hoping that it is. And actually, having played it, I've been really quite impressed. Ah, right. right. Pedal board. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, you got the worm! <laughs> oh my word! Oh, I, so looked at, I looked at this. Right. Well... Come on then, explain okay. yourself. Right. King of Blues, it's basically a, a two uh, blues drivers. What are they called? Um, the Blues Breakers. The... <laughs> The Marshall pedal, blues breaker, the blues breaker. Okay, that that's where I am. Yeah. Um, so it's basically two of those. It's not it, a Boss blues driver, but a no, Marshall no, no, blues exactly. breaker. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically two of those. In there. Yep. Right. Uh, Seventy pounds, brand new. Uh, uh, Elect lady. Yeah, we know you like. Yeah, this. I like that. They're forty quid. They're fine, and I got this. Knew these are eighty pounds. <laughs> But a guy at work had it. The knob was broken off, so I offered him 40 quid for it. They come with the power supply. And so that's the board. And you've, you've got a shower. So this is a duck board that I've sawn in half, right? And it's, uh, yeah, with a bit of Velcro on. So, so I've got two pedal boards out of that. A duck board being a shower, a, a shower, thing that you step yeah, on when you exactly, get out of the shower. Exactly. Yeah. So I've got two pedal boards out of that for a tenner. Awesome. So there you go. It okay. really is... Looks, no expense spent. Looks like you. <laughs> looks like you've gone for the. Uh, what's powering this then? It's got a, actually got a battery in it. It's got a battery, yeah. and then you've got the two the, the standard wall warp power the, supplies. The cheapest things that I could. Okay, I'll pick it up on the power supply with my board because I have made a massive, massive fail right from the outset, which I will reveal to you now. Okay. Yeah. My board has just gone from being budget to being pro. And the reason, the massive fail that I made, <laughs> the massive fail. And I, you know what, I, I thought I should stop this, take the worm off and start again with something more realistic. But I thought, no, because this is indicative of a genuine experience, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. I wanted one of these yep. for a couple of reasons. That's so cool. Um, it's analog. Yep. What year is this one? Uh, mid nineties, I would guess. Ah oh, man. Yeah, there's, there's something else interesting about it as we'll go on. Um, I got it on eBay for ninety pounds, right? So ninety pounds sounds like a lot for for one pedal, but my my justification is 
I can use that for 20 years. Yeah. And if I want to sell it tomorrow, I'll probably get 90 quid for it. Yeah. So yes, it's a bit of an outlay, but what I was saying earlier about cheap versus value for money, I think that is value for money, depending on if it sounds any good. However, where I've completely pooed the bed, Daniel, <laughs> is it requires 24, 24 volts centre, centre positive. positive. Centre positive, of course, yeah. 2.5 mil. With all the things you don't want in a power supply. Yeah. My power require my power supply has already eclipsed your whole pedal board. I've I've failed, but, yeah, but that's okay. That's um, okay. I had to make the be best of the bad yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. The good news is, when I come to change my pedals and move up, I've never got to buy another power supply as long as I live. Okay. So, so brilliant. So what's oh, the other oh, two? Oh, the, the other two. Um, I wanted a fuzz. Ah, uh, you've gone fuzzy. Fox Gear make. Great stuff for, for cheap. I really love their Echo Sex Baby or Echo, yep. whatever it's called. The little tiny little Binton Echo Rec Type 1. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought I'd try this. 67 quid. Nice. Which I thought was great as, uh, well, it's obviously Manic after Jimmy, Manic 1967. I thought that was 67 quid. I thought that was all meant to be. Um, if you went shopping on, you know, Amazon or Google or Anderton's, given that they do Tone City, or anywhere else for that matter, and you search for a, an overdrive pedal for less than 50 quid, that's what you come up with. Yeah. I've I bought another couple of pedals that I tried out, like from uh, Amazon, and I bought an analogue delay for like £27, and, and it's trash. Just junk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... I, I thought I'd, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. brilliant. But then... Interesting you know, that neither of us use much EHX stuff, more modern uh, EHX stuff, and yet we've both gone for one here. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, right, enough talk. Uh, let's have a listen, shall we? Okay. Uh, can I have the honour of turning the amp on? Yes. This would be like a childhood memory for me. Actually, we shouldn't mock. I don't, I don't mean to mock. I don't mean to mock. That's, that's not right. Ready? Yep. And there it is. You got noisy power supply. <sighs> yep. <What? laughs> right. Let's let's explain what's happening, shall we? What's what is that, Dan? Right. So, if Fraser doesn't put too much noise reduction on the uh, vocal mics, you should be able to hear that lovely, loud and clear through these vocal mics. It's a really, really cheap 9 volt switching supply that doesn't have any filtering on it. So that frequency you hear is basically the switching frequency that's creating the DC. Right. Um, so I'll need... I'm going to have to have a solution to that. Let me, let me just put something on the end of that and see if I can solve that problem first. Is that cool? Yep. It's going to blow my budget, but I can't, obviously I can't live with that. Two seconds. Wow, it even picked up the light switch. When you switch the light switch, it even picked that up. Right. Okay, so what you've what you've added a fifty quid, forty quid, fifty quid. I think I can. Brains not working. But... Filtering. When Dan and I bang on about quiet power supplies, that's what we mean. So this is just a wall wall, and it's not it's it's not only Dan stuff that's quiet, but Dan stuff does happen to be quiet. So you've just absolutely smashed the budget <laughs> by getting rid of some noise. I know. All right. Okay. I Come know. Let's okay. See so this, right. this is glorious. <laughs> I was going to turn the boost on, but the boost was on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How dare they call that 20 watts? Yeah. Yeah. That's flat out 
Okay. B- b- before the point of really awful distortion. How's your context so far? And I, it's it's not good. Yeah. It's far from satisfactory. However, it's awful. Um, <laughs> What's awful about it? It's, like, there's well, it's this. <laughs> If if I if there was a mic in front of that there and I had there is, a mic, there is a mic and there was blaring out of the fold back, yeah, it'd be shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I'd be heard. Okay. You know, let's see if we can make it any better than with okay. your uh, with your pose. Right. So the idea is, I would have one side of this to be gainier. <laughs> So clean sound, direct to the amplifier. Overdrive. <laughs> Woo! Painkillers. And then I would use this side. I I've heard that sound on many records. Right. That kind of very mid-focused, boxy thing. Sure. Isn't it interesting how all the hiss and everything is way worse? Uh, yeah. I, I, You know, there are no bad sounds. There are just contexts, right? It, it, you're not loving it. Of course. Come of on, course. <laughs> uh, all right. But, yeah, look. <laughs> Awful. So then uh, I would a bit more output. For like, so I can give a bit. Uh, I doubt this is going to handle it, but but the idea would be just to push a little bit more if I wanted a bit more, you know, it's a couple of gain stages sort of cascading yeah. into each other. So. Nice bit of cone cry. There you go. Go and get the cone cry going. Oh, that's actually pretty good. So volume wise, definitely not loud enough to gig with. No, wouldn't that wouldn't work? Because um, you wouldn't get above the drummer. It has a very very specific EQ envelope, all in the mids and lower mids, and yeah. no trouble to speak of. What would upset me is that if someone heard that and that and they thought that's what King of Tone sounded like. Sure, absolutely. Because it's again, it's about context. You could you could take any one of these things in the chain here and say well if you just change that one out or that one out that one out it would all radically improve yeah that and what, the, one of my bugbears about people describing the sounds of pedals when they don't say what they're plugging into yeah you know so anyway that's well, i don't want to listen to that anymore no no of course so shall we look at the my alt my alternate solution okay all right right so i knew this was going to be harsh yeah but i thought okay if there's 20 watts it should be able to power an external cabinet, right? So eBay, 80 pounds for an external cabinet. That was a bargain is all I'm going to say. Right. Let's reveal it, shall we? Okay. Back in the room. Right, there you go. Hey ho. Hey ho. I can't believe you got that for 80 quid. You know what, though? There's a, there's a lot of cheap 4x12s out there because people are not sort of, lots of people are getting rid of them. It's still, it's still, it's still, it's still the, noisy. It's still noisy. That is a Marshall 1960B. It's the bottom cab of the classic pine, I would imagine. I hope it, uh, ply 
construction, right. I hope. I think they did move to a uh, particle board at some point. But anyway, it's the 1960B. It's rated at 300 watts on the back, which means it's got the Celestine 75 speakers. Oh, really? That were the, the rock speaker that's in a lot of those Marshall 1960 okay. cabinets, whether they be A, angled, or B, bass, straight. Right. You ready? Yeah. I mean, you know, is anyone going to have a Marshall 412 in there? Sitting room, probably not. Is anyone going to carry one to a gig? Probably not. But it's going to make the point about the thing that we both think is the worst thing about that amplifier. Yes. The speaker. Okay. Come well, on then. Here we go. So I haven't changed anything on the front, right? This is exactly the same settings as I had in the little speaker. Okay, um, I've realised we've forgotten to plug the dB meter in. Okay. Uh, right, let's have a check. Oh man, bending down gets harder, doesn't it? You get... Wrong with that hitting 100 dB, really okay. Right, there you go, loud enough to gig with for sure, but probably no clean headroom. Mm -hmm. No, very little clean headroom. But, um, can you just do one thing for me? Can you yes. get the gain on and just roll the volume back on the guitar a bit and just yep. see will it clean up? Not really. It's got here. I thought it was four. I thought there was a fourth position. Nice, but it's, look, at the, look at the how massive that is. Yeah. Um, Liv, if you're watching this, that pedal show is going to buy some new pickups for Christmas. Because I think this guitar could seriously do with some with a pickup upgrade. Yeah. Ah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we're going to get you some new pickups, and we're going to put them in, and that will help this neck pickup sound so much better than it does currently. Yeah. Good shout. But anyway, so there's that's that. Of course, I have my. because I love a little bit of that, I do. And when you hit it with, with this, you get. So that's that. That's as good as Alex Life's never said. <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you just hear the comments section explode? Um, seriously though, with all that compression, all the top end rolled off it and that heavy flanging going on, 
It's cool. I, I again, I have heard that sound on many records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I th- that four by twelve has changed everything. Yeah. So we're absolutely. not saying go out and buy a four twelve, but you might want to think about maybe just a good quality one by twelve would still make a colossal difference. It's just, that that part of the speaker chain. It's is turned that out so... from unlistenable. Yeah. Again, I don't mean to be disrespectful towards people who have this kind of gear. But it it's turned it from being unlistenable for me anyway, mm, mm. and you. Yeah, it, absolutely. To being actually pretty good, to, pretty good it, guitar sound. Well, it it. You know, I'm not going to get kicked out of the band. You know, f- for having that sort of a sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe, but it's not. Or I wouldn't want to. As long as I'm not stood next to someone that's got tone. Yeah. I'm going to be fine. But I I don't know. I think it's I I. I now think that choices of different overdrives would would make a significant difference. Absolutely, because into that thing without the cab, you could have stuck any overdrive in the front there, and it'd be like Man, all I'm hearing is yep. this little cab and yep. an ugly sound. But mm-hmm. actually, now you've got the wherewithal to move forward a little bit and try yeah. different flavors of things. Yep. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, and then of course we've got the memory toy here, which is we're going to find out why it was cheap. This. Oh, hang on, let me get the screwdriver. Okay, uh, the EH memory toy. Because th- there's no reverb on this amp to speak of, so I need a little, want a little bit of that, you know. But if I put the Elect Lady on with that. So it does have modulation. Um, yeah. It's I, a very basic analog delay, but it's, you know, the, the problem that I have with the really cheap analog delay is so the amount of noise that they add yeah. makes it unusable. That is fine. You know, it's... It sounded great. Yeah. The, um, can you adjust the modulation at all or is that it? Uh, so it's quite a big, quite a it, lot, lot yeah, of modulation. Yeah, it is. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I maybe. Tell you what, what was really interesting is once we had... Now that we've added the uh, kind of frequency range via the cabinet and yep. the dynamic by a more powerful speaker and cabinet being able to handle what the amp's doing, you've then stuck some filtering on with the Elect Lady and got those high-end frequencies really happening as you like it. Yep. Bit of delay, bit of overdrive. I started to hear Dan. Wow. Yeah. I, and you started to become Dan again rather than... That's this very interesting. ...really annoyed... <laughs> I can't deal with this sure. kind of thing. So I, that was a vertical c- curve of improvement, I think. <laughs> right. You know, I think the, uh, well, so two things. It's the cab. Never underestimate how important that's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously we're going from this to a, a classic Marshall 4x12. So yeah, the two the two absolute extremes. So you can imagine that if the difference isn't quite so extreme, then the sound difference isn't going to be quite so extreme. Yeah. So it's really to make the point. Yeah, um, but the you know if if that's what you've got to work with, my budget for this total thing, including patch cables on the board, guitar, everything here, come out to three hundred and sixty pounds. That is nuts. So if you add the cab onto that at eighty quid. 
Is that what you're saying? Um, to add the cab. No, that includes the cab. Includes the cab, 360 yeah. So it was 280 before you had the cab. Yeah. Wow, that's £10 more than my guitar alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so that's what I mean. I went extreme, extreme budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it, it gives me a place to start from. Yeah. You also have to have, add the um Oh, yes, power then, yeah, the power supply thing in. And that's, you know, and that's still not right because the, the power supply yeah, itself yeah. is so noisy. But, yeah, I've got, if I turned up, if I was in my first band when I was 15 and I turned up with that, I'd be a, I'd be a hero. <laughs> Absolute hero. <laughs> yeah. If you, and if you're... Um, more than 15 and you're trying to get a rig into the house uh, I think you would be less than a hero if you wheeled that into the sitting room and went yeah. look love look what I bought dude I'm, I, in my mind I'm always 16 yeah. I've got my first band looking for that hero status so it's nice. it works I think I, well I'm kind of astounded by that <laughs> if for many reasons but this sort the power out is really the, your next upgrade realistically is to sort the power out isn't it absolutely yeah no question because that's well the noise in there is unusable yep speaking of unusable noise <laughs> shall we have a listen to mine yes right. i already know this is going to sound really good because they're great well let's see so one great thing about the um katana is that it's got four channels right so you can it's got four different amp types so i'm sure. not going to do a in-depth guide to the katana because it'll take forever but you can go from um see i'll add this as a minute give fraser a bit of an idea on level i've uh, got some i've got some effects on there at the moment so i'm just going to turn all that off just for a second this is the 100 watt mode in the clean in the clean setting So pretty flat. Yep. Add some reverb. And a bit of delay. So what I'm noticing about both our setups is they both lack quite a lot of treble and presence. Yeah, right. Um, so I'm going to turn the treble up. I'm going to turn the presence up just to get a basic clean sound mm -hmm. from which to work. Not showing you the top shots of the Katana. It's on the clean mode and I've, the treble is almost all the way around at this point. Sounds pretty sweet, this guitar. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So I'll just show you a couple of the gain sounds before we look at the pedals. Okay. Um, in fact, I think I had one programmed in. Ooh, look at you. See, with that, 
sound, I'm hearing more of the guitar with what I had. Yeah. It was just all compression, all effect, you know. Yeah. Just, but I still hear the guitar with that. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? it? I don't know. Fine. I think we were hitting 100 dB, were we? Almost. More, more or less. So it's roughly the same volume that what yep. you were, what you were doing. That's in the second amp model, which is the slightly overdrivey one. Sure. But you can keep going. Um, So just a little bit of resonant feedback there from the guitar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the crunch mode okay. and just set it up sure. almost clean right. and we'll use that as our base. Yep. Yeah? Nice. Yep. So that's the gain almost on zero in the crunch mode. Right. Nice. Cool. There's some delay on the amp. I'm just going to leave that on there for the time being. Um, right. Overdrive. Start there. Sorry, totally forgot what key I was in. So it sounds great. That's really nice. That's all right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's fine. And as you heard, that overdrive goes from uh, not much to quite a bit. Sure. And it's got bass and treble, which I think is really important. Oh, okay, cool. Because in a lot of overdrive pedals, especially if you're dealing with an amp you don't really know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you're hearing loads of uh, noise again. <laughs> I don't know where that noise is coming from. Probably from the worm. They're probably from this. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is a. It's not. The noise issues are not good. Um, so, just a good all round overdrive. And I think having that bass and treble attenuation can really mitigate a lot of different style amps. Whereas, if you've got yeah, it's very a true. standard overdrive pedal which only has one tone knob and you're stuck with a sort of bass position or a mid range position, mm -hmm. it just can be nice. As you heard when I first started playing it, it was very, very um, aggressive and trebly. So, turn the treble down and bass up. And um, it became a little bit so more, lovely. more dealable with. Yep. Um, fuzz. Yeah. Turn this down a bit. I haven't actually tried it loud yet. 
Let's try that. So given that we've got a bit of a feedback problem anyway, this is probably going to get a whole lot worse. I just remember Casino has been a lot easier than this. <laughs> it's literally any high gain at all and it's is just straight into crazy feedback. We are quite loud to be fair. Let's turn the volume down a bit. Because what I remember about Casinos is mm. um, being able to just coax that feedback. Right. You gotta be on the control all the time. Right. Remember I did a gig, I did a wedding gig once with a casino and a VHT pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> Super, super sensitive. Who chose this guitar? <laughs> Oh dear, I think I might have just lost Dan. When I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that sounds great. When I um when I plugged it in and tried it all last night, I was only at like a nano watt, so obviously it was fine. Okay, so we know that we're going to get a lot of feedback. So yeah. high gain, high gain is out, which you know a lot of people are going to be going duh. It's a casino. Um, I guess if, maybe if you were. No. But you get extra points for choosing a casino alone. There's no way it's... around it. Right, so here's the fun part then. Ready? Yes. It's like the TARDIS is... Dan and I have opined in the past that mid-90s electroharmonics pedals weren't necessarily the best ever made. Right. In terms of noise floor, reliability. And in fact, when I bought it off David, I clicked buy on eBay. Very panicked phone call going. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, about that. Um, I've just plugged it in, it doesn't work. I was like, oh, that's surprising. And bless him, he took it to his um, mate who fixed it. Oh, really? Yeah, just uh, fixed it straight away. It was an earth wire that was off. It was something okay. fairly simple. Yeah, yeah. But then I get it back and I'm like, wow, it's analog, it's 24 volts, it's gonna sound amazing. I watched Peter Stroud's demo of it on, on YouTube. I'm like, yes. And then I went,
Electro harmonics definitely have a. I don't know if Mike just doesn't like filtering. It's part of the reason that the Mammy Man sounds so good that they just don't filter it. Yeah. You know, but the the the, the quality of the modulation is really lovely. It's, it's really so that great. was supposed to be a phaser. <laughs> Um, this is the, the tremolo. Actual modulation itself. Can is we fix beautiful. it? Beautiful. I'm gonna have a go. Because it, I one it's of the things. So good. Is that like a almost like a harmonic tremolo in it? Yeah. It's. I mean, it doesn't sound like a straight. No, no, it's not trim, an amplitude it? tremolo. Amp Great if we could get the noise floor down. I don't yeah. know how you do that, but I'll have a look. What is that? Filter caps and well, there's I, I doubt there's filtering in it, but you know, there might be. I'll just check the resistor values and stuff because I doubt they would. I mean, I know I know there's some stuff that's noisy, but I doubt the designer heard that and went, Yeah, great, ship. Yeah, yeah. So you think there might be another uh, issue? Uh, there might be, yeah, might which be. I guess but I'll have a play. It brings us to all sorts of questions you might want to ask about buying stuff sight unseen on eBay because you don't know what you're going to get. For me, it's a it's a um, it's that trade off between no name OEM mm. digital. One of the digital modulations I wanted to buy was one that is available from Landlord Effects, Moa, like every cheap brand that uses this. Mm -hmm. They obviously all come out the same place or more or less the same place. And then whoever just buys them and sticks their own brand on it. There's one that does seven different modulations okay. in a box that size. 
And surprise, surprise, it was sold out everywhere, so I couldn't get that. Right. Now, I think that would... Wouldn't have the noise issues that that's got, but it mm. would no way, no way in the world no. have the magic of no, the modulation. It really does have magic in it. It's yeah. so nice. So it, I guess the point is, whichever way you go when you're on a budget, you're going to make some kind of compromise. Sure. The com- yeah, the, com- of the compromise I've made here is in, don't know what I'm going to get. It's secondhand. It's always going to be worth that. I'm going to sell it for 90 quid tomorrow if I mm. need to sell it. So mm. in that, in that, in a straight value for money sense, it's worth it. But can you live with that noise? I probably couldn't. That be that's too much noise for me. Even yeah. though normally I'd say, you know, once you're hammering away on the guitar, it doesn't matter. But that is excessive. Sure. So let's see if we can mod it. Versus something kind of flat sounding and no character. No character yeah. and doesn't it's one thing I found about some of these sounds. I mean, this guitar, okay, doesn't do the high gain stuff at all but you can probably upgrade those pickups or something that's going to work better uh, yeah the nature of it being fully hollow yeah of course is such that it's never going to be a high gain guitar yeah but you know gary clark jr gets away with it to be fair he mm. plays a casino with with fuzz and sounds great and mm. deals with the feedback um but i think for all the other stuff for the bluesy jazzy stuff the pop stuff the Magic. clean stuff it's got a lot of character yeah awesome what do you think well, i think you because you started with the the amplifier, you've nailed that. And just the fact that I could hear the guitar made yeah. all the difference. That's impressive, that, isn't it? It is really impressive. It is great. Um, you know, look, it's... it's When you hear our actual rigs, which because we're going to do that next, but so there's going to be a part two to this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is... We should have said that at the top. Um, what are we calling part two? Part two is... The Dream Rig Challenge, one right. guitar, one amp, three pedals, Dan versus Mick, comprising one amp, one one, uh, one amp, one guitar, three pedals, blah, blah, blah. There is no budget. These are your ultimate choices to sound as good as you can possibly can. Points will be awarded for the high cost of the gear, lack of availability, celebrity connection, and online snake oil and hubris. Points will be deducted for pra- practicality, pragmatism, convenience, or low volume. <laughs> Obviously, it's a bit tongue in cheek, but we're going to have a go at that. But, be, but you know, obviously, the the other end of this. But you know, we can. You and I could take these rigs out and go and join yeah. the the very average white band. So <laughs> there's a lot of those out there. Um, if you uh, you get you've now got the choice, Dan, to finish off this video. You can change any one thing any one thing you can change what are you going to change i mean the app obviously right um but change to what that's what i'm saying Re- your your next realistic upgrade oh would be a hot rod deluxe yeah that into a hot rod deluxe killer yeah however the hot that's a big upgrade right that's a really big upgrade if if i'm on a really tight limited budget upgrade I'd probably try and find better power supply. Yeah, but the two things that, you know. The two weakest points at this at this point are the amplifier yeah, and, and the, the power, power supply. supply. Yeah. That's that's the you feel those are the things that are robbing you of the most tone. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um I would go with uh oh, what yeah, would I go with. I don't, that amp doesn't need to be upgraded, although I'll throw the cat among the pigeons and say, I know I'm going to enjoy a hot rod touch sure. more. Yeah. Um, but I think that's fine. That amp is absolutely yep. fine. It does sound great. And yep. it is, that, that is definitely not the first thing that needs to be upgraded. Mm. Um, the first thing is fixing the worm Yeah. and see if, if we can make that any quieter. Secondly, mm. um, I'd probably want to play a solid body guitar. Sure. Um, to mitigate some of those feedback issues. Mm, mm. But yeah. it does limit you the amount of gain that you can have. Like, I'm surprised how sensitive that guitar is yeah. to that. Yeah, it really is. It's it's very alive, which is a good thing on the other end of because course. playing it clean and playing, you know, if you could play jazz, it would If you're be... playing clean at volume, yeah. that's where that's yeah. killer. That's what I've always loved them for. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Okay. Beautiful. Um, what do you reckon then, guys? What was your total spend? 
So my my total spend was approximately 300, 570, 660, uh, 720, 750, board was eight quid, 758, power supply, unfortunately. Is up there. Is going to be, what, 150? Yeah, something around that. Yeah. So I've done nearly 900 quid. Right. Yeah. So I've been disqualified, have I? No, no. I think when obviously it sounds better, you know, I've got, there was, there was a couple of good sounds from that, but I'm so limited with yeah. what I can do. But if I was just going to, you know, rock out as, a, you know, like 16 year old in the, in his first band wants to, wants to have a rock sound. What about a 46 year old in his first band? Well, you know, depends what the uh, the <laughs> occupation of that forty six year old in his first band is. I might I might aim a bit higher. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, look, I wouldn't recommend this rig. <laughs> I would recommend this rig. Right there, you go. That's yeah. the difference. And I I would also say that um, it's a solid base from which to progress. Sure. As is that as soon as you change that amp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that fair? Absolutely. So what do you reckon, guys? So yours, your total cost was three... 360. So mine's three times the price of yours. Okay. Ouch. Right. Yeah, I think on, on price and starting point alone, Dan has to win. Dan's wins. I get one! Yeah! Yes! Come on! <laughs> uh. Okay, so get ready for the next instalment of this video, which is the opposite end of this. <laughs> Money, no object. Uh, insane rigs. What is the one guitar, three pedals, and one amp we would choose? Lovely. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey, which is where the gig bag from this guitar came from. Very good. Uh, and in Australia... Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Also, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You make this possible. Thank you so much. Uh, also, um, to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed strings and mugs and hats and T-shirts and um, pedals for that matter uh yes thank you so much it's uh it's awesome it is awesome yeah. um and simon has reminded me to mention the bit links that happen in the video descriptions please click on those uh because they're affiliate links and we get a bit of cash if you buy anything which really helps with the funding of the show thank you because none of this stuff is placed here by manufacturers it's stuff that we acquire yeah so uh i gotta see if i can get a refund and bef <laughs> before my wife notices. actually i should no i'm telling a lie boss gave us that amp did they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, bless them. They did give us okay. the amp. Yeah, Very yeah, kind. yeah, yeah. Uh, but, not, but not for this show. It's been in a box for a year behind that thing. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Just to make that point. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Uh, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.